Good morning and welcome to this our Easter Day service, this Resurrection Day. It starts in a garden, much like it did all those years ago. It starts with surprise, with an unexpected, with something that's not quite what was anticipated. Of course, we all thought that we'd be gathered in church today. Various things happening, because they always do. Today is a different day, but we can still gather. We might be apart from one another, but we're joined together, I believe, in this act of worship. I have a few people helping me again this week. Uh, hopefully you find their input a blessing. And in a moment, I'm going to hand over to the first of those before joining you back inside my house. But before that, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exult all life forms throughout creation. Jesus Christ from death is risen, sound the trumpet of salvation. It is truly right that with full hearts, clear minds and strong voices, we should praise the unseen God from whom we all draw life, and Jesus, our anointed one, the human face of God's own goodness. In Christ, the gap between us and God's own deep mysteries have been bridged. The ancient fears, the tribal taboos, our sense of shame have been swept away in the light of Christ. Our first mothers and fathers sang of God's salvation around fires in the desert. Their sons and daughters, we sing the same song. This is the night when Christians everywhere celebrate redemption claim forgiveness and take hold of new life. This is the night when God says no to death, that final boundary to human life, that door we once feared to approach. This is the night God swallows death, absorbs its sting into God's own life, strips death of all power, renews our fainting hearts. Night truly blessed when heaven and earth are divided no more, Women and men are reconciled with God. Death gives way to life. And so, our God, in the joy of this night, receive our offering of praise. Accept this Easter candle, a flame divided but undimmed. May it mingle with the lights of heaven and continue bravely burning to dispel the darkness of night. May Christ, the morning star that never sets, draw us closer to God and may the peace and justice of God be our shared human experience. Accept our praise and our prayers that we offer through Jesus Christ, the risen one who shares the life of God with Father and Spirit forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you, Jan. Let's see if you can remember the appropriate response. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. A prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. An invitation to confession. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil confessing our sins with a sincere and a true heart as we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And now, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. During the season of Lent, we didn't say together the Gloria, but it is Easter, so we can return to these familiar words. Do join in if you remember them. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And they collect the special prayer for this Easter day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. We're now going to have a series of readings, the last of which will be read by Jack before he then brings us our Easter Day sermon. I'll see you back here soon on the other side of these. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 to 6. The joyful return of the exiles. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built. O virgin Israel, again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, 
to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no part reality, but in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the messages he the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message is spread spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were opposed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnessed to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify and to testify that he is the one ordinate, ordinated by God as judge of the living and the dead. He all the prophets testify about him and everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins throughout his name. Hi guys, welcome to our Easter morning service. Um, this is the children's address uh, from the uh, Easter morning service. Um, and so I'm going to begin. This is a happy day, isn't it? I wonder who can tell me what makes today so special and why it's such a happy day. That's right. Today is Easter, the day we celebrate that Jesus rose from the grave. Since today is a happy day, I want you to show me your what your face looks like when you're happy. Oh, that's brilliant. Our faces show the way we feel, don't they? Let me see what your face would look like if you were sad. How would your face look if you were surprised? Afraid? Angry? I want you to help me tell the Bible story today. As I tell the story, you will help me by showing with your faces how the people in the story feel about what is happening. Will you help me do that? Great! Let's begin. It was early in the morning on the first day of the week when some women went to visit the tomb where their friend Jesus had been buried. He'd been crucified on a cross and buried in a borrowed grave, and the women were going to put spices on his body. The women were very, very sad as they went to the tomb. When they arrived at the tomb, the women discovered that the stones, the stone that covered the entrance had been rolled away. Can you imagine the look of surprise <gasps> on their faces when they saw the open tomb? And when they looked inside the tomb, they had the biggest surprise of all. The tomb was empty. Suddenly, surprise turned to fear as the two women in the two men in bright shining clothes came and stood beside the women. In their fright, they bowed down with their faces to the ground. The men spoke to the women and said, Jesus is not here. He has risen. Don't you remember what he told you when he was in Galilee? Then the women remembered what Jesus had told them, and they were no longer afraid. Their fear had turned to happiness, and they went back and they told Jesus' disciples what they had seen, and that Jesus had risen just as he had told them that he would. What a happy day! 
You and I have reason to be happy today, don't we? We're happy because we know that Jesus rose from the grave and that he lives forever. But we're also happy because we know that the Bible tells us whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now I think that is something to be very happy about, isn't it? I'm going to finish this little bit with a small prayer. So if you want to get into your attitude of prayer, which can be hands together, hands open, eyes open, eyes closed, however you pray. If you do, if you get into that position now, and I'm going to say, dear father, we are happy today because Jesus is risen from the grave and lives forever. We're also happy because we know that those who believe in him will also have everlasting life. Amen. Thanks for listening, guys. Happy Easter! I will see you all soon. Take care, God bless, and stay safe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over 
and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He too saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separated from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Oh Christ. I'm really impressed with the way John writes. In this passage, which in so many respects is the start of the Christian story, John echoes both the start of his own gospel and the start of a Genesis story. He begins first by telling us that it's the first day and it's dark. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. His earliest Christian readers and listeners would have recognised the link to the opening of his gospel. And his Jewish readers and listeners would have recognised the link to the creation story. John talks of light overcoming dark. And if you recognise it, the opening of today's gospel is a wonderful piece of symbolism. Because in its echoes of Genesis, it marks the beginning not just of chapter 20, but the beginning of a whole new chapter in human history. But on Friday, we watched that light go out. We saw the light of the world, the light for all people, overcome by darkness, nailed to a Roman cross, dying and being hidden in the darkness of a tomb. Humans had murdered the very source of light and life. That it was a legally sanctioned killing doesn't take anything away from this death because the legal process was flawed from start to finish. So we shouldn't be surprised that it was dark when Mary came to the tomb on that first day because we've both the normal cycle of day and night, but we also have a deeply symbolic darkness. John tells us that it was the first day and that it was dark for one reason, to remind us that it was also dark that first day when God spoke a word of life and light. We call what God spoke into being creation. And so in the darkness of this first day, God again spoke a word of life and light. We call it new creation. We call it resurrection. We call it Easter. And Mary didn't know that she'd walked into, right into, a new creation. Mary had been with Jesus all the way. She'd seen lives made new, bodies healed and eyes opened. She'd heard the complaining of the disciples and the criticisms of the religious leaders. She saw how the crowds adored him and how the rulers hated him. She stood under the cross as they killed him. 
and her heart was broken. She'd seen the adoration of one group of people when they'd entered the city on that Sunday, and the hostility of a different group, a renter crowd, when they stood before Pilate at the end of the week. And now it was all over. Or so it seemed. She may have thought, well, the least I can do is to anoint the body with spices. Everyone deserves a proper burial. Her heart was heavy in her soul. It was still dark. And it strikes me that the darkness Mary was experiencing was twofold. Yes, she got up before dawn. But she was also in the dark in the sense of knowing and understanding what was going on. That empty, forlorn feeling is perhaps like the feeling that political campaign workers have when their candidate has lost. Someone has to go back to the office and pack up all the stuff. Or a football team that's been eliminated in the semi-finals. Their season's over. No cup for them. What's left to do? Pack up and go home. Except in Mary's case, someone had died. Sadness, disappointment, despair and emptiness had been Mary's companions since Friday. And after surviving the unspeakable horror of Friday... On the first day of the week, in the early morning darkness, she was dealt yet another blow, one more event in a long string of atrocities, because the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. The body was gone. She felt helpless and hopeless and promptly burst into tears. When all hope appears to be lost, what else can we do but weep? And let's face it, we all have our days when we stand with our dreams in shambles around our feet. Why me, Lord? My life was pretty good, and now this darkness. What we must learn, and it is a hard lesson, a difficult lesson, is that it's easy to believe when it's sunny, but very difficult to believe when times are dark. It's easy to believe when life is good, but when it turns sour, the natural inclination is to feel rejected. Anyone can walk in the sunshine, but life's not like that. And we'll all have some darknesses. And from conversations I've had over time, it's very clear that there are many people who have more than enough darkness in their lives. And your being here today is a part of your search for a bit more light. Let's look again at Mary in the dark. The physical dark she got up before dawn, but also in the darkness of distress and abandonment. But we can learn from Mary's experience, because even in her darkness, God was at work. Of course, that's easy for us to say, because we know how the story unfolds and what Mary was to discover when she arrived at Jesus' tomb. It may be less easy for us to see our own way through our own particular darknesses and the difficult situations we find ourselves in. But we need to realise that even in those difficult situations, God is at work in the world and is waiting to work in our lives, even if we find that hard to accept. He's waiting to be asked to bring light in and to dispel our dark situations. And then Mary meets an angel. Let's not get tied up with silly images of wings and halos. The word angel simply means messenger of God. So in that respect, anyone can be an angel. In her darkness, Mary is ministered to. She's cared for and comforted. And her life goes in a different direction because she's given a task. Go and tell the other disciples what has happened. God's in the process of dispelling her darkness. And he's in the process of dispelling ours. He not only ministers to her, he calls her into usefulness. Go and tell the disciples. The dispelling of our darkness demands that we tell others in order to complete the cure. And what is it that we're charged to share? The truth of Easter is that we have a man who said that God especially honours the poor and the powerless and the hurting and the hungry, who said that those who make peace are God's children, who taught people to be reconciled to their enemies instead of harming them, 
who taught people to sell their stuff and give the money to the poor, who taught people to love their enemies, who taught people not to repay evil with more evil, but to overcome that evil with good. And the vested interests of his time heard this man and said he was a fool. The vested interests said that there was no room in the world for a man who said such things and practiced what he preached. The vested interests said this man and his crazy ramblings were just too dangerous to be allowed, and so they killed him. But God raised him up. And by raising Jesus from the dead, God was saying, No, this man, my son, is right. Everything he said is right. Everything he did is right. Everything he said about me is right. It's you, world, who are wrong. Wrong about him, wrong about me. And wrong about yourselves. Easter means that the Jesus way, the way of discipleship, is the way to live. Welcoming the poor and powerless, making peace and being merciful, making room at our tables, loving our enemies, overcoming evil with good. That's the lesson we can learn from Mary's story. We're called to be like the angel, the messenger of God who comforts those whose darkness is overwhelming because in their darkness we show God's grace and love. But we're also called to be like Mary, to share a new hope with others as disciples of the risen Christ. The truth of Easter is that God calls us into a relationship with himself through Jesus. And that must surely be worth sharing. As believers, we sometimes have difficulty acknowledging that the same power that rolled away the stone that covered the mouth of the cave where Jesus was buried can roll away the stones that have plagued our lives and blocked out the light. The power of the resurrection can dispel our darkness and enable us to live empowered lives. And that journey often begins in some form of darkness, grief or abandonment. It's there for the asking. It's there to be grasped. It's the gift of the risen Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the example of Mary Magdalene, whose darkness was lifted to allow her to be your messenger to others, to allow her to speak of you to those she encountered. We think of our own darknesses and all those things that distress us and cause us anxiety. And we ask you to help us to come daily more into your light as we seek to be your disciples and share with others the Easter story of new life and new hope. Amen. Thank you, one and all, especially Jack. Turn now to the creed, our statement of belief, those uh, truths that we hold in common. I'll read them for us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Henry and his sisters as they lead us in our intercessions for today. Father God, thank you for new life, for spring flowers 
baby chicks and newborn lambs for spring sunshine and rain showers, which helps the plants to grow. Thank you for the dried bulbs and seeds, which looked so dead. They are springing into new life. Soon they will be beautiful. Most of all, Lord, we thank you, you for your son, Jesus, who suffered and died for us and on the cross. And, and today we call celebrate that on Easter day he rose from the dead the mm, taught us to love our neighbors and to cure for those in need as if we were caring for you so this time please comfort those who are scarred please help all the doctors and nurses curing for the sick help us to be kind and let those who are lonely know that we care. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amy. Move now to the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples, and he said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, if you are watching with somebody else, you might like to share the peace with them. You might like to send a virtual hug. You might like to remember the people that ordinarily would sit or stand around you in church where we gathered together. Let's use some of that faith and the Holy Spirit to carry that peace which Jesus brings to those for whom we know and care about. Now to the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomes us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread. He gave you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And now as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the whole world. Continuing in prayer, we turn to the Lord's Prayer. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. At this point, if you have had some bread and wine or other appropriate things with you, this would be the point when you might uh, consume those, along with others in their homes watching this too. Just as we would if we were knelt or stood at a communion rail. Let's be joined together as we together consume, take into ourselves the body and the blood of Christ. In the post communion. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before we finish today, a final piece of music actually written uh, for us, not for us, was written by Tim, and we have his permission uh, to use it today. And he has some rather talented friends who have helped with the creation of this piece of music. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you on the other side.
final blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. So now, go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining with me. Hope to see you again soon.